occasion when we unveil this artwork that's been created by the sound agents, Moira and John, on behalf of the people of Liverpool. You know, when you look behind us um, and we see these images, often we think those of us who were born after wars look at these names and look at these photographs and perhaps just see images and don't really understand that behind each of those images there's a story of a family, there's a story of a living person. And the Lyceum building was the building that was used as the post office. So lots of these letters went backwards and forwards across to the, during the Great War. Those letters that took home to those families left behind, those connection points with the young men who were out there serving in the war. And it's a tremendous privilege for us in Liverpool's big company and indeed on, on behalf of the Mayor's office as well for us to be able to enable this artwork. So when the idea of this artwork first came, it was over a year ago, and then when the sound agent, when we met with him, please come forward, and Councillor Nick Small as well, please. Assistant Mayor, is that correct? Councillor Small, Assistant Mayor of Liverpool. When the idea first yeah, came yeah, for this artwork, uh, we thought what a great idea it was, but we really didn't really, I suppose at that beginning, we thought, well, let's try and see how we can do it. So working together with the Mayor of Liverpool, together with the sound agents, and together, particularly with the owners of the building, because we had to get the owner's permission, we now have this artwork, which I think is a tremendous example that we can set before the people of Liverpool now to show what the people of Liverpool did for us by going to war. And it's great to have family members here today, so please stay and look and read these letters and think every time we pass this beautiful building, to spend the moment looking at those names and thinking and giving thanks that the world we live in today is made a better place. I know we have our difficulties, we have our struggles in the city, and we have this epic discussion that's going on in this country about what happens in a couple of weeks' time. But remember what these young men gave and also what their families gave so that we can celebrate and live our lives in the way we do it today and be thankful for that. So on behalf of the big company, I'd just like to introduce Moira from the sound agents and also councillor school. So thank you for coming here today. The the work is called Dulce et Decorum Est after Wilfred Dolan's poem. And John and I would like to thank all the people over at Liverpool and Merseyside and way beyond that for getting involved, sharing their personal stories about their families personal photographs and we'd like to thank the bid for working so closely with us in the mayor's office and um, that's it. Nick Birkinshaw is going to read a couple of poems in a moment but I'd just like to introduce Councillor Nick Small. Well thanks uh, Moira and, um, and Bill for that introduction. I'm really pleased to be here today to, um, to represent the mayor in the mayor's office and this is something that we wanted to um, to get behind because I think you know, we're, we're, we're coming up to a series of um, anniversaries to do with um, World War One, and it's particularly important to Liverpool and it's important that we acknowledge the role that, that Liverpool citizens played um, in, in those difficult times. We've got the um, Giants coming back to Liverpool a series of events in, in 2018. But I think in, in 2016, it is important that we, we commemorate um, you know, the Somme and the, um, the impact that that had on Liverpool. And I think that you know, events like this, exhibitions like this, are really important because they highlight um, you know, the extraordinary contribution, the extraordinary lives that many ordinary people led. And I think you can't, you know, unless you read letters like this, unless you see what people went through what people experienced it's really ordinary people experienced and then went back and, and, and led their lives afterwards and um, how you know significant that is how you know life-changing that was how thankful we should all be and um, for the contribution that they made it's great that um, some of the descendants some of the families of, of some of the people um, who, who've written the letters are here today to talk about you know what happened afterwards to talk about some of the impact and it's that kind of thing that you know, we really do need to acknowledge in Liverpool and I think this exhibition does this so well done 
um, to the sound agents. I've known Murray and John for, for several years now. I've seen um, some of the other work that they've done around Liverpool, and you know th this is this is the latest um, piece of work, and it's it's absolutely um, absolutely fantastic. So well done um, to everyone involved. I hope that the people of Liverpool will take time to look at this, to read what's happened, to see what's happened, and to learn some of the lessons from that. So thanks for listening. Thank you, Nick. And I'd just like to introduce Nick Bagginshaw. So I'm going to read a couple of uh, pieces of poetry. Um, the first was written by uh, a Frenchman named of Guillaume Apollinaire, who's best known as uh, one of the founders of the Dada movement. Um, before he was that, he was a soldier. I remember as though it were yesterday, a thousand rockets that rose from the opposite trench suddenly woke the guns of the enemy. Then, from the observation post, there came the announcement that the range of the enemy guns were so great that the explosions no longer could be heard, and all the gunners watching at their posts announced the stars were darkening one by one. And then loud shouts arose from the whole army. They're putting out the stars with shell fire. The stars were dying in that fine autumn sky. We were dying there of the death of stars. And on the sombre front with its livid lights, we could only say in despair, they've even murdered the constellations. But in a great voice, out of a megaphone, from some sort of supreme headquarters, the voice of the unknown captain cried, the time has come to light the stars again. And the whole army shouted together, fire at will. The gunners fired, and the sublime stars lit up again, one by one. Our shells rekindled their eternal fire. The enemy guns were dazzled by the scintillating of all the stars. There is the history of all the stars. And since that night, I too light, one by one, all the stars within that were extinguished. The second piece is uh, probably the most famous poem to come from the First World War, written by Wilfred Owen, a Wirral man. Bent double, like old beggars under sacks, not need, coughing like hands, we cursed through sludge, till on the haunting flares we turned our backs, and towards our distant rest began to trudge. Men marched asleep. Many had lost their boots, but limped on, blood shod. All went lame, all blind. Drunk with fatigue, deaf even to the hoots of tired, outstripped five nines that dropped behind. Gas, gas, quick boys! An ecstasy of fumbling, fitting the clumsy helmets just in time. But someone still was yelling out and stumbling and floundering like a man in fire or lime. Dim through the dusty panes and thick green light as under a green sea, I saw him drowning. In all my dreams, before my helpless sight, he plunges at me, guttering, choking, drowning. If in some smothered dreams, you too could pace behind the wagon that we flung him in and watch the white eyes writhing in his face, his hanging face, like a devil's sick of sin. If you could hear, at every jolt, the blood come gargling from the froth-corrupted lungs, obscene as cancer, bitter as the cud of vile incurable sores on innocent tongues, my friend, you would not tell with such high zest to children ardent for some desperate glory the old lie, dulce et decorum est, 
Pro Patria Mori.